Sidekick Pro adds a few features that allow you to manipulate the Redis-based queues by way of Lua scripts that run inside of Redis. This yields far better performance than you can achieve otherwise. Let's look at what's provided. We're going to use the Sidekick Batches project just to have some workers defined to play with. The first pro feature we want to see is the ability to delete a job from a queue. Assume you have a job that you know the JIT of and you want to delete it for some reason. Let's make a new job and we'll store the JID. Okay, now we can just delete that job from its queue. We'll delete the job by JID and then we'll check the size again. That's great if you want to delete a particular job, but maybe you really have a ton of jobs of a certain class and you want none of them to run. Perhaps you know they're all going to fail because of a bug that was introduced and you'd like to just preempt them running in the first place. Sidekick Pro offers the ability to delete jobs by class. Let's make a few jobs. Okay, let's check out the queue size. Alright, let's delete by class. We'll delete all the notification worker jobs. And now the queue size is 100. And we'll go ahead and clear the queue just to clean up after ourselves. You will from time to time want to find a job by JID. If you have a lot of jobs in your Redis, and in production you likely will, this is slow as it has to scan through them all. Sidekick Pro adds a Lua-based Redis extension that provides a much faster means of finding a job. Let's start off by getting a lot of jobs into the retry set. First, we'll make a worker that just raises. Then we'll create a bunch of them. So now we should end up with 100,000 jobs in our retry set once we start Sidekick. Let's start it. Okay, and as we can see, these are all failing with lol no. Let's remove Sidekick Pro from our gen file to look at the performance of finding a job in a job set by JID without the Pro extensions. There's the JID. We'll find it in the retry set. So you might say, well that was blazing fast, what's Josh on about? And that seems fair. But you won't actually have Redis on localhost in production. So to simulate Redis over a network, we'll introduce some latency. We'll do this with a tool called Toxiproxy. We start off by running the Toxiproxy service. And we'll create a proxy for our Redis instance that adds some latency. It'll listen on port 26379, and the upstream will be port 6379, which is the normal Redis upstream. And now we'll make it toxic with 20 milliseconds latency, which seems fairly reasonable. Our type is latency, and we want to set latency to 20. Okay, so next we'll configure our Redis to use this port via the Redis URL environment variable, starting our Rails console. So now with just 20 milliseconds latency to Redis, what does our speed look like? All right now, this is a lot slower, and this is not with horrible latency, this is 20 milliseconds. In fact, even with 2 milliseconds latency, this operation took a few seconds for me. But with this, it's a lot more pronounced. Let's switch to Sidekick Pro and see how the speedier API does with this. So I'll open up the gem file. Turn it back on. Run it again. Let's find it. And it's basically instant. So this is with the exact same latency to our Redis server, and this is a huge win. All right, a need that comes up frequently is to know the status of a batch to show it in your UI for long-running batches. First, I'm going to open up my routes and turn back on Sidekick Pro. So Pro adds the ability to do this easily with the batch status rack app. So you can add it to your project easily. I'm going to go to config application.rb. 
I'm going to require sidekick rack batch status. And then I'll just add it as a middleware. So middleware use sidekick rack batch status. And so now we'll add a batch so we can see its status. And we've used this file before, but now it's got quite a few more records in it than it did then. So I'll make an upload with that as the body. And then if I call upload.importbang, and let's make sure Sidekick's still running. And it is. Actually, before I do this, let's go ahead and clear out all those other jobs, because I don't really want them to be mucking stuff up. Okay, so u is upload.find4, and we'll import it. And before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and start the real server, and I'm going to start Firefox. Okay, so we'll visit localhost 3000 slash sidekick. Oop, I didn't start the Rails server, I started the Rails console again. There we go. Okay, so now we'll run upload.importbang, which will create the job that ultimately creates the batch. And let's look over here, we should have a new batch. And let's get the batch ID. Actually, I think this is the batch ID. I think the whole thing is. Okay, so now we can visit batch status, the batch ID.json. And there we go, there's our batch ID. We can see the JSON status. And now we can start a terminal and curl that URL every second. So let's go ahead and make a new terminal. And we will say while curl this URL, do echo, this is just to get a new line, sleep one, and done. And so here we can see that jobs are being completed bit by bit. You can imagine having a JavaScript application making this request and updating a progress bar with it trivially. So that's it. In today's episode we saw Sidekick Pro's speedy API extensions, deleting jobs by JIT in class, and finding jobs by JIT. We also saw how you can track the status of a batch as it is completed for providing feedback to your users. I hope you enjoyed learning about Sidekick Pro. See you soon with details on Sidekick Enterprise.